Hi, I'm Scott and this is a demonstration of the plasma speaker I just built. Plasma speaker is a speaker that works by uh, causing a, uh, a plasma arc and uh, varying the uh, frequency of the arc to create sound pressure waves which you'll hear as sound. So currently I'm not modulating any sound onto the arc but you can see sort of a static arc back there. We'll turn on the uh, old iPod here and we can now hear sound coming out of the arc. We can adjust the spark gap. About an inch is pretty good current settings. So when I first started this project a couple years ago, I started look, by looking at the uh, Instructables website, which has uh, sort of some of the starter information, and I made a lot of improvements from there by doing some various research. So a couple things about about the circuit: all of almost all of them use a TV flyback transformer, which is that. Uh, transformer right there next to the arc and then you use a TL494 chip to, uh, to modulate the frequency and apply that to a MOSFET driver which drives a MOSFET which applies uh, power to the primary winding this red winding here on the flyback and that's basically how it works. We're currently driving the uh, base frequency of the uh, flyback at 130 kilohertz. The uh, primary is being driven by uh, about 2 amps and uh, 30 and a half volts. And what's nice is we finally got the MOSFET so it runs nice and cool. It's not even warm to the touch. It's one of the biggest problems with these circuits is uh, burned up MOSFETs. And part of what helped with that, the last thing I did is I added some capacitors over here in parallel with the, uh, the primary winding. And that allowed me to tune up the frequency and it lowered the uh, current draw considerably. So let's try a few more songs. And that is a plasma speaker. Hope you enjoy. So let me talk a little bit about the circuit board itself. So the basics of the oscillator is this TL494 chip. That's this big dip package right there. And it is it uses this uh, this little disk capacitor here as part of the oscillator. The other part is a uh, variable resistor which you can either solder one onto the board or in this case I have this uh, coarse and fine uh, potentiometers here hooked up to it so I can adjust the frequency. So the, uh, the capacitor and the resistor forms the frequency. The other one here is this little pot and that controls the dead time which is essentially the uh, width of the on pulse as compared to the off pulse. Now onto this side of it we have a MOSFET driver chip. This is a TC4429. Uh, it's important to use one of those to, draw, to uh, drive the MOSFET because you get cleaner uh, on and off transitions. Here is the MOSFET itself. This is an IRFP250 uh, MOSFET. I also designed the board so you can uh, hook up an uh, IRF840 or an IRF540 which are popular. Um, up here we have an audio amplifier which is used to uh, amplify our signal and feed it in to the uh, same pin on the TL494 that our resistor hooks to and this allows us to modulate the frequency that's being generated with the audio. Uh, another option is to uh, modulate the dead time with the audio and modulating dead time it's an option I built into the board and it's what the Instructables uh, site recommends but I kind of like modulating the frequency instead. And then over here we have a uh, snubber circuit. The snubber circuit is uh, helpful to uh, dampen the high voltages kickback from the flyback. There's a MOV 
metal oxide varistor, which is also used to protect the uh, the MOSFET. Uh, let me think if there's anything else important on here. Oh, of course, uh, back here is your flyback transformer. I've got about 10 turns of uh, wire wound on that. It's This uh, board is fed by two uh, two different supplies. One of them is a 12 volt supply for the TL494 and the op amp. The other is a 30 volt supply which feeds the MOSFET. Of course this big gold thing here is some old uh, CPU fan that I had. It's very important to keep the uh, MOSFET cool because if it overheats it will burn out. And I actually have a pile of uh, leftover MOSFETs over there. It burned up. Another important thing that's not shown on the board because I uh, I didn't know about it in time when I made it is uh, adding some capacitors to the primary. I've got a couple of those here and I basically just clip them onto the two wires going to the primary. The capacitors allow me to get the frequency up higher and uh, drastically reduces the uh, the current that's being drawn from the power supply. So there's two controls uh, typically on these and they are the uh, the frequency and the dead time. So the frequency I have hooked up with these two uh, pots here which are a fine and a uh, coarse adjustment. The dead time I have a little uh, pot mounted directly on the circuit board. So if we watch the traces as I adjust the uh, coarse adjustment on the frequency, so what I'm doing is changing the base frequency that is going to the uh, to the primary. And on the yellow trace you can see I'm kind of widening the uh, both the top and the bottom of the uh, yellow at the same time. So we're just making everything go slower. I've been running it at about 130 kilohertz. So the other thing to notice about adjusting frequency is if I adjust it down, lower frequency, start pulling a lot more current on the MOSFET. So you can see over there the uh, the amp number there on my power supply it's going up and up and up. Now nope, we're about six, seven amps. Don't want to go much higher than that. Our MOSFET will be starting to get warm when we do that. So the higher frequency appears to be a lot less uh, stress on the MOSFET. So the other adjustment is the dead time. I have that via a little uh, pot here on the cir circuit board, and that controls the width of the on pulse compared to the width of the uh, off pulse. So if I turn it this way, see we're widening the uh, top of the yellow trace there and shortening the bottom. Go too far and we're not stable. Bring it back, we're stable again. Now we're narrowing the top of the yellow, increasing the bottom of the yellow. and get too far out of whack, we lose it again. So where I usually adjust it is for about 50%, somewhere about there.